Hi, I'm Darren Peppard. Welcome to the Leaning into Leadership podcast, the podcast dedicated to today's hardworking leader. Join me every Sunday for leadership insight, inspiration, and a little pep talk to keep you rolling down your road to awesome. Hey friends, welcome into episode number 112, a special midweek edition of the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. Uh, My guest on the show today is David James. Now, if you're in the social media world, there's a pretty good chance that you're following David James or Heroic History 22 as he goes by. Uh, David shares a lot of wonderful stuff from the middle level education world, but he also uses a separate handle for NCMLE, the North Carolina Mid-Level Educators Association. David is a big part of that organization and shares a lot of incredible stuff around mid-level education. My career began as a mid-level educator. I spent five years as a junior high school science teacher. Absolutely cherish every moment of that time. Yeah, I probably have some nervous ticks still from working with junior high kids, but man, I loved every little bit of it. David himself is a seventh grade social studies teacher at Harold E. Winkler Middle School in Concord, North Carolina. Uh, David has an interesting journey. Uh, David began at Winkler as a seventh grade teacher, left for a period of time to be an assistant principal, and then returned back to the classroom at Harold Winkler. He's going to tell you that story today. And about how even though he left an assistant principal role to return to the classroom, his leadership didn't decrease. If anything, his ability to lead increased in that role. David has done some incredible stuff and helped to lead some amazing things as part of that Harold E. Winkler Middle School staff. He's going to share some things they do for professional development that were born from the staff and continue to grow within the staff. It's an incredible story about culture, an incredible story about leaning on and leaning into each other and about the value of teacher leadership and the impact that it has on the success of a school. Folks, this this conversation is absolutely incredible. We're going to talk a little bit also about the NCMLE conference coming up in March of 2024. You don't have to be a North Carolina mid-level educator to attend this conference, folks. Lean in and listen when David talks about that. Oh, this is an incredible conversation, folks. I can't wait for you to hear it, and you're going to get it all right on the other side of this. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get on to the episode. When I first began as a teacher, way back, we're going to talk about the Wayback Machine here in a few minutes, but if I were to jump in the Wayback Machine and go to the beginning of my teaching career, You would find me at Kingman Junior High School in Kingman, Arizona, where I taught for five years. And if you had told me in college, you know, you're going to spend five years teaching at the middle school level, I would have laughed at you because I didn't think I wanted anything to do with middle school. And I'll be honest with you, the five years I spent at middle school was absolutely amazing. I truly, truly love middle school. I think there's something magical about middle school, and I think there is something magical and incredible about the adults who choose to work in a middle school with middle school kids. And my guest on the show today, David James, is one of those people who just can't get enough middle school. David, welcome into into the show. I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you for taking me today. Yeah, absolutely, man. So um, I mentioned the Wayback Machine, David. So I know you are a seventh grade teacher. You're in North Carolina. Um, but let's let's jump in the Wayback Machine uh, just to kind of give everybody a little bit of a baseline of, of who David James is, what you're, you know, what you're all about. Let's let's use that Wayback Machine and go to the beginning of your career or maybe even just prior to. Um, tell us tell us how you made your way to North Carolina, and then talk a little bit about your journey. Yeah, so I'm a graduate of Ohio University in 2007. Uh, I did a few years of uh, student teaching there at Ohio University, and I'm a middle school person through and through. I started in middle school student teaching, um, graduated there in 2007, um, and went back home 
and couldn't find a job. So I substitute taught for a few years, and those were some difficult years uh, right after college. Um, but substitute teaching taught me a lot. But in 2010, I got a call from um, Principal of Harold E. Winkler Middle School in Cabarrus County, and he wanted me to take the seventh grade social studies position in his new building. Um, and three years of substitute teaching was enough for me. So my wife and I made a huge decision to um, change environments, change positions, and just change the course of our lives and make our way eight hours south to Charlotte, North Carolina. And I wouldn't take it take anything for the world. Um, I taught five years here at Winkler Middle School, uh, where I am currently. Um, and my leadership and um, my experience took me into an assistant principal role for a few years uh, as assistant principal for four years at a school down the road named uh, Jan Fries Middle School. Um, I worked with an incredible principal, an incredible team there for four years under the uh, direction of Christy Bullock. And after four years, I had a little one coming on the way. Aiden Michael James was going to be born in 2017. And my wife and I had to have a conversation about what was next. And we decided um, to take a step back. And that brought me back into the seventh grade social studies classroom back here in room 701 at Winkler Middle School in Cabarrus County. So um, I'm going on 15 years of overall teaching here in the profession every single day has been in middle school. Uh, I wouldn't take it for the world. Um, but currently, I serve 125 students. I serve nine teachers on the seventh grade hallway as a teacher leader. Um, I hold multiple leadership positions here in my building and with Cabarrus County Schools. It has been a wonderful journey. Um, it has taken me beyond what I could ever believe it would in 2007 in Athens, Ohio. But um, uh, we'll see where it takes me next. I think that's fantastic. You know, there aren't a lot of people who will dedicate their life to middle school. You know, a lot of people who, who head into middle school, that's, well, you know, I really want to teach, you know, upper elementary, and this is this is the, the first opportunity I got, or I want to teach high school, but this is the first opportunity I, I've gotten. Uh, but man, it really does take a special person to spend time in middle school. Uh, but man, I'll tell you what, you know, my, my takeaways from middle school, I really felt like the kids at the middle school level, and I taught eighth graders, uh, man, they... If, if they cared about you, if they knew that you cared about them, if you built a relationship with them, it was amazing what they would do. Now, at the high school level, you know, yeah, you build relationships with kids, but sometimes if they don't want to do something, they're just not going to do it. Middle school kids still are very much teacher pleasers. So mm -hmm. it's been a while since I've been a middle school teacher. Is that still your experience? Yeah, nothing's changed there. The middle school group is incredibly um, special, and it takes a special person. So uh, shout out to all my middle school teachers that are listening, um, but they are pleasers. And we've got a group of individuals, got a group of students that can still be molded, can still be influenced before their high school years and uh, still want to do uh, overall the right thing. And that's what I love about them. Um, as uh, the assistant principal at JN Freeze Middle School, I had the opportunity to do, you know, get to know the sixth, seventh and eighth graders really, really well in that building. Um, and seventh grade is just my favorite. And, you know, people will laugh at that. And when I talk to parents and when I talk to my family, they will laugh at me as well. But I tell you, it is a new day every single day. And seventh grade kids bring it. And it doesn't matter if you had a tough day the day before. It doesn't matter if you had a tough morning at the house. They are going to brighten up your day and they are going to um, really help you get through any day. They're a special group. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I went part of part of my middle school experience. I also coached basketball and I coached football. I um, actually coached baseball for one season as, as well. But um, in basketball, I coached the seventh grade boys for a couple of years and then and then moved up to the eighth grade position. And uh, man, they were just an interesting, squirrely, but so much fun group of kids to be around. And so I can totally understand why why you would love being with. Uh, with seventh grade students. Um, I'm curious, you, so you mentioned the assistant principal spot and you, know, you spent four years in that role. So I remember when I, when I first made that move to the, uh, uh, to the assistant principal position after, after being a classroom teacher, being in other people's classrooms, it made me realize, um, you know, man, that's not what it looked like in my classroom or Oh man, I would be so much better teacher now if I went back. So you're one of the people who've actually done that. So I'm curious, 
One, what did you learn about yourself as an educator when you took that role as an assistant principal? And what maybe did you improve or change as you know, as a as an instructor going back into the classroom because of that assistant principal experience? Yeah, I learned I wasn't very good. When you put yourself um, in other classrooms, there is so much growth opportunities. And, and whether that's from a beginning teacher perspective, going in and, and watching master teachers, or even at the AP level, when you walk in and you see just the phenomenal work that is being done by middle school teachers on a, on a daily basis. So you hit the nail on the head. I learned so much. And when I came back into this role in seventh grade at Winkler Middle School, I am twice the teacher that I was before. And five years is not enough experience. And I understand that. But now that I've come back and understood the perspective of the whole building level, perspective from the parent-teacher relationships, building relationships with kids, how the inner workings of the building goes as far as the athletic department, the, the, um, you know, the support staff, the custodial staff, all of that builds into your experiences and your knowledge and goes into who you are as an educator. And you're right. That perspective is, is something that we, we aren't all uh, granted in our experience, you know, we kind of go through this this ladder of, of leadership and, and a lot of us stop and, and that's where we're going to stay as administration. But for me, the teacher leadership role is a core proponent of any school building. And I tell all my colleagues that, hey, we need to push each other because guess what? I love our principal right now and I, and I will, I hope she stays here forever. But the fact is that in this building in itself, we've had four principals in the 12 or 13 years that it's been open, right? So as teacher leaders in this building, we have a duty and we have the job to push this forward. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about professional development and uh, we have a structure in this building uh, called the Wolfpack Workshop structure that we do professional development every Friday and it is led by teacher leaders. And we are building capacity. We are uh, building expertise. And every week we have teacher leaders that are presenting to our staff we are growing a culture and a community of, of, of learning in our building that goes way beyond what an administrator can do. I love all you administrators out there. Don't don't uh, let, let me, um, you know, out anything that you guys are doing, working your tails off. But for me, being a teacher leader is a core proponent of any effective school. And uh, I learned that once I got back into this role. That is something that is special to kind of my experience. And I know not everybody has the, has the opportunity to go into the AP role and then back again. But seeing the big picture definitely has changed my perspective and made me a better educator. Well, I don't think there's any school leader that's listening to this podcast who would who would feel bad about you saying what you said. I mean, I think I think every good administrator wants somebody like you on their staff who is going to take on that leadership role and is willing to push their colleagues to continue to grow. Now, I want to go I want to go a little bit deeper though with the uh, the Wolfpack um, professional development. And talk about kind of the inception of that when it when it got started, kind of the the how the the process. I, I will uh, here's why I'm asking you this. I'll, I'll just preface this a little bit. Um, handfuls of schools that I work with around the country want to grow that exact type of structure. So you guys have one. You have it going well. Talk a little bit about it. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because I was just on social media today and a question was put out by uh, one of my followers that said, what is the most effective professional development that we can give our teachers? And I answered, it is professional development from teachers in that building for teachers in that building. Um, two years ago, uh, Rebecca Phillips, who is our principal, um, put out a question to us, to the whole staff on the first day, and she asked everybody in, in the room, where are we average in this building? And this comes from Jimmy Costas's book, Culturize. And um, I answered on my little post-it note and I pulled her aside later and I said, we are average in this building on professional growth. There is nobody in this building that is leading professional development. There is no learning going on. And I was pretty straightforward with her and I think she appreciates that overall. But the fact remained that we didn't do anything outside the box to push each other and build a culture of learning. So we sat down and we came up with this voluntary Friday morning professional development called Wolfpack Workshop. Here at Winkler Middle School, we are proud wolves 
And every Friday we come together in the media center and I will have 20 to 30 to 40 staff members that are coming on at eight o'clock in the morning before school and learning from other teachers in this building. We have amazing conversations. We have a lot of culture building. Um, our colleagues are participating. They, it's voluntary, so they don't have to be there, but they enjoy the time with those colleagues and it gets them through, uh, through another week. Um, just to fill out a few of the work, workshops that we've had, uh, empowering colleagues uh, to build leadership capacity. We've talked about, um, you only get one first impression. We had a parent come in to talk about open house and how important what that was. So we had Wolfpack workshops going before school even started. Um, we talked about uh, equity, equity in the classroom, coming together and making sure all voices are heard in all the classroom strategies for graphic novels, um, the science behind learning. I had two beginning teacher ones lead a Wolfpack workshop on the brain science of adolescent learners. Now you talk about empowering teachers in my building. Wow. This incredible work that these teachers are doing, and we're in the second quarter of their of their first year of their career, right? So, I am proud of the structure that has been built, right? Like you have the leaders in your building, and they want to do this. You have to build a structure that allows them to do this, that lets them feel empowered, that builds the capacity in the building. Because, like I said, Mrs. Phillips, love her to death. I may be here longer than Principal Phillips is going to be. So who's going to take that role on? Who's going to build the capacity? Who's going to lead the next group of teachers? And that's what we're building in this building. So take a step further. Cabarrus County Schools has what's called the RISE Conference every year. Amazing conference that we put on here within the school district. Harold E. Winkler had the most presenters at the RISE Conference in 2023. And that goes back to our structure that we had in place empowering teachers, letting them feel comfortable, giving them a little bit of practice and feeling comfortable within themselves to speak to other educators all around Concord, to elementary, to high school teachers. I mean, it was incredible to see. And we went on also to be the secondary school uh, winner that day. So shout out to Winkler Middle School. But the, the structure that has been put in place for the Wolfpack Workshop has taken the learning and the culture in this building to the next level. Oh man, I I don't doubt that. I don't know how it could do anything but that. I mean, as as I'm listening to you talk about this, um, I mean, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions, but but what it really is really pulling out in, in my mind is it's got to be now this this culture where conversations about instruction, conversations about learning are probably happening all over the place. Just because you've you've created this system where it's okay to talk about instruction we're okay to to share with each other a lot of places that's not the case a lot of times it's pretty guarded it sounds like the culture in your school is very much the opposite it's look we truly are all in this together and we are all here to learn from each other what a, what a powerful powerful system yeah, Friday mornings are really heartwarming when you can see everybody come in. Yes, we have donuts. Yes, we play bingo at the end because if you get attendance, you get to check off the bingo number and then you get a free T-shirt if you win the bingo card because you've been great at attendance. Like all of that is awesome and all those incentives are amazing, but it's voluntary, right? And they don't have to be there. And when you see people that maybe wouldn't usually come to or maybe grumble at you know a staff meeting that are coming on Friday mornings because their colleague down the hall is presenting, that's really heartwarming. And that support goes a long way in the building. Um, and, and a few things that we can kind of like take to the next level, we take all of our presentations, we add them to staff notes. So if you're not there, you know, it's okay. And you know, nobody's judging your attendance at Wolfpack Workshop, but you have all the presentations at your disposal. You know, we have, uh, all kinds of meetings that go on before school so people are not there and people do miss every now and then but they can find the presentation and staff notes um and like i said the wolfpack workshop bingo has taken it to a whole new level as well uh, you would never guess how uh 40 adults get really excited or really mad when you randomize a uh, number generator and their uh, wolfpack workshop bingo number is not called correctly <laughs> <laughs> i bet that just one last question on that. So, how is how is the how's the topic developed? Is do you guys kind of have a running? This is what we're going to do, or is it done more in like the uh, ed camp style? 
Yeah, so at the beginning of every year uh, for the staff meeting, I will send out a Google form that says just name, topic, and description. And I will take everything and I will kind of be kind of strategic on where it needs to go. So if it's our Wolfpack workshop on making a great first impression in parent communication, that needs to go in the first quarter. If it's something that can be kind of pushed back towards maybe winter break, um, then we kind of strategically put it there. And it always lives in staff notes. So um, if there's some spots coming up in the second semester, I'll send out an email and I'll say, hey, we got some spots opening up for Wolfpack Workshop. If you and a colleague or you individually want to present on something, fill out this Google form. And, and you know, I kind of look at the details and I'll put a description in our staff notes and I'll spice it up a little bit. But overall, it's pretty organic. And I've got a lot of volunteer, volunteers that are just taking their leadership to the next level and wanting to feel comfortable in front of, uh, of their colleagues. And, and the support that they get is, is awesome as well. So, you know, we take pictures, we put on social media, we celebrate um, our Winkler Middle School social media accounts are always active. And I'm always posting our celebrations from our teachers on my social media as well. So um, to answer your question, it is it is pretty straightforward. It's a it's a Google form that I'll send out. They they give me an idea. We run with it. We kind of put some uh, finishing touches on it, and they present to the staff on Friday morning. I just think that's so awesome. It's it's like you're putting a conference on every single week, but uh, on a little bit smaller scale than the conference that you are also connected with. A little bit larger uh, structure with the North Carolina Mid-Level Education um, Association, NCMLE. Uh, I know you have a big role there. Talk about kind of how that came about. Uh, so you, you, you took a step back from the administration stuff. You're, you're back in the classroom. It wasn't too long later that now you end up uh, doing some work with NCMLE and your role has really, really grown there. So talk a little bit about, about the association. Talk about what your role is. Yeah, in 2019, uh, the principal at Jan Fries Middle School asked me to be part of the North Carolina Association for Middle Level Education. They needed a marketing director. Um, so I kind of stepped in um, to work with some graphic design and some social media stuff. And we pretty quickly took our social media accounts to, you know, 500 followers to over 2,000 followers. And that's kind of where we're sitting right now. But through that, I have really developed a lot of connections, a lot of networking, um, and just taken all of these to the next level for me personally. Um, but the North Carolina Association of Middle Level Education is the only advocate for middle level education in North Carolina. And we have uh, hundreds of schools that are part of our membership. And we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of individuals that come to our annual conference that we are really looking forward to in March of 2024. I know you have been part of our conference in 2023, um, and it was an amazing time. Last year was our 50th anniversary as an organization, and we celebrated that uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we will be back in Charlotte in 2024 to celebrate another annual conference, and it will be bigger and better than ever. Yeah, bigger and better. That is absolutely well said. Let's talk a little bit about the lineup for that particular conference. Uh, we were talking before before we hit the record button, and... Uh, you know, certainly there are a ton of names there. I don't know if you want to try to name all of them, but but we can certainly talk a little bit about about what's going on with this conference. You've done some things a little bit differently this year, including adding an administrator only strand to the conference. Um, talk about talk about the headliners. I know I know the uh, the keynote speaker is is a repeat keynote speaker, a very very good friend of mine, and, and somebody who's become a good friend of yours. So let's. Let's hype up NCMLE Inspire. This thing's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm always ready to hype up Inspire 2024. So in March 2024, we will welcome 500 plus educators into Charlotte uh, for our annual conference. Uh, Jonathan Alzheimer will be our keynote speaker. He got a lot of excitement, a lot of great feedback last year. So we asked uh, Jonathan to come back. Jonathan is a middle level educator from Virginia, and he can speak boots on. Uh, about what it feels like, what it is to be a middle-level educator. And that gets a lot of great feedback from our participants. So Jonathan will be back. Looking forward to that. Um, but our featured speaker lineup is second to none. And I have been told it rivals all of the national conferences that um, a lot of our people go to. Um, Darren, you will be with us as a featured speaker returning from 2023. But we got uh, Baruti Kafeli 
coming this year. We've got Katie Kinder, Zach Bowermaster, Brandon Beck, Laquanta Nelson, Charles Williams. You can look up all of these individuals on Twitter. Um, that's just to name a few. Um, we've got over 20 kind of featured EDU experts from around the country that are coming into Charlotte to uh, show up to, to display their expertise, to talk about culture, to talk about teaching and learning. And on top of that, we've got 100 plus middle level specific sessions from our valued educators right here in North Carolina. Every day I look at all the proposals that are coming in and it's from social emotional learning to teaching and learning to to uh, the uh, the relationship with the athletic department to uh, social services to supporting your support staff like there is so many things it is a diverse conference that is for sure the featured speakers are going to be awesome and uh, also you mentioned the school leaders institute so for the first time in our conference history we are going to have a school leaders kind of administrative strand for our school principals that is going to get them in the building and get them learning uh, as well with us because we feel like that is really important. So we want you to register your whole team, you included our school administrators and bring a few people with you to NCMLE Inspire 2024. Um, we have, the registration is live. You can find all of our information at ncmle.org. Uh, visit all of our social media outlets. We've got all of the featured speakers there. We've got Jonathan doing an intro with us. Um, everything that you can find on social media and ncmle.org to register. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's going to be an incredible conference. And, uh, you know, the, the administrator specific strand is something that I think is very unique. It's something that you don't see at very many conferences. And, um, I guess maybe a little bit of transparency here. It's something that, that you and I were having a conversation along with Jonathan uh, about as those names started to come in, as more and more of those people, you know, really started to come forward wanting to speak at the conference, uh, putting together that administrator strand, that opportunity to, number one, attract more principals, assistant principals, you know, aspiring leaders to your conference, but also to provide some real value for them, you know, so often, and, and I don't know about your experience in, in the time you were an AP, but I felt like as a principal specifically, so much of the professional development that we did was geared towards our teachers, which was great. I need to know it. I need to understand it so that when I'm in the classroom, I could give quality feedback so I can support. But there was very little professional development that I really felt was geared towards making me a better leader. So when I look at the roster of people in that leadership strand, I mean, guys like Dr. Frank Rudneski, I mean, I've known Frank for like 15 years and it isn't just the fired up leadership stuff from, from a guy like him. It's, you know, here's a guy who was a middle school principal for a long time and can really bring a lot of value to the to the table, along with a lot of the others that that you've already mentioned. But Frank, for some reason, jumped to the jumped to the front of my mind there. But um, talk a little bit more about kind of that development of that strand and how you see that playing out over the two and a half days of the conference. Yeah, and it's going to be really special. So the conference will go on as planned, and we we invite uh, administrators to go to all the sessions. But specifically, when you sign up at ncmle.org, if you are a school administrator, there is uh, an option to sign up as a school administrator, and you will be um, given uh, access to the schedule as it pertains to the School Leaders Institute. Uh, we also want you to take advantage of the networking that is available uh, with all of these featured speakers and all of these great minds in leadership like yourself, and like Frank Rudnetsky. And we're also going to set up a little social meet and greet uh, just specifically for you guys to meet other North Carolina middle level administrators that are uh, going through the, going through everything that you're going through on a daily basis. We want, it to, uh, we want NCMLE conference to be a value of you. It's obviously a value of our teachers because we have many, many, many of them come every year. Um, but the administrative piece is special this year. We wanna keep that going moving forward and we want you to be a part of it. Outstanding. Uh, I think they're definitely going to find a lot of value in it. Uh, just again, looking at that roster, folks, go to ncmle.org and and click on the conference. Seriously, check out the roster. It is, I'm serious. I know I'm one who has said it to you a lot. Uh, this thing is like a national conference with just the absolute, you know, um, incredible impact 
uh, that will come from all of those speakers. And honestly, I'm really fired up to hear some of the teachers from Harold Winkler Middle School. I want to hear some of them, you know, talk about the work that they're doing. I'm sure they're going to be sharing a lot of stuff that they do from uh, from the Wolf Wolfpack Workshop. So um, let's let's do this, David. We're at that point in the show. Um, I'll ask you the same question I ask everybody here on the show. This is the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. So how right now, David, are you leaning into leadership? I'm staying involved. I was inspired by your pep talk this past week about staying in the game. Um, and this goes out to my teachers that are 10 to 15 years um, into the profession or 15 to 20 years into the profession. We have to stay involved. We have to stay positive. Um, and too often we uh, have these frustrations that lead to non-action. Uh, this message is for you guys. If you're in a rut, um, stay involved, stay in the game, stay inspired, stay motivated. I'm leaning into leadership by uh, paying it forward to my beginning teachers. I'm paying it forward to the new colleagues in this building. But overall, for myself, I'm staying involved and staying, letting my voice, letting my face be seen and heard uh, throughout the school building. So um, I try to lead by example. I try to lead by um, you know, just staying involved in everything that I can do in this building and with Cabarrus County Schools. Outstanding stuff right there, man. So, David, people are going to want to get in touch with you, uh, whether it's about NCMLE, Inspire 2024, or just simply because they want to learn more from David James. How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm pretty active on all my social media accounts. So you can find me at Heroic History 22 on Twitter or X, and then Heroic History 22 on Instagram and I'm dabbling in TikTok a little bit. So we have a lot of fun uh, with my classroom TikTok account. Um, I'm also the marketing director of NCMLE. So you can find uh, all of our social media accounts at NC Middle on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. God love me doing all of that work on TikTok. It is something else being the marketing director uh, for, for this um, organization. But I tell you, the amount of connections, the networking, the love that I get from, from yourself and from everybody just uh, all the EDU folks um, has been really inspiring to me. And that has kept me motivated and, and kind of uh, kept me in the game. Love it, man. Thank you so much, David, for joining me here on the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. I will see you in March at NCMLE Inspire 2024. Looking forward to it. Man, just absolute gold there from David James. Once again, I really appreciate him coming on the show and being a guest here with me. Um, appreciate, too, the relationship I've been able to forge with David over the last year, year and a half, and definitely look forward to seeing him at NCMLE. Folks, go down in the show notes. Make sure you hit the link there. Check out that NCMLE conference, Inspire 2024. It is at the end of March in uh, North Carolina and Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, folks, it's a phenomenal conference. If you're a school leader, you really should come just for that School Leaders Institute. It's absolutely incredible who's going to be there. Um, and bring some of your middle school educators with you because this this conference is going to be absolutely stellar. Thank you for joining me here on the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. Have a road to awesome week. Thank you for listening to the Leaning Into Leadership podcast brought to you by Road to Awesome. Don't forget, click subscribe, give a review, and share this with somebody who might also enjoy leaning into leadership.